I know you've been getting calls like crazy. So how's how, what? What was your first reaction when you heard um, Keefe was finally arrested? Man, like I kind of like I knew it was inevitable. I knew that there was he was going to get arrested. <laughs> but the day it happened, that was a surprise. So I immediately like was calling people and calling Dupree and calling Mike Dorsey and just like, what the hell? It's finally happened. So super excited about it. Right. You know, I was just thinking, I was stuck on, I was talking to James. Um, you know James, right? Yeah. Um, and I was just telling him, listen, you we've got to like really when you think about it, Greg created this like kind of chain reaction. Cause if he didn't come out and and put this information out there, he didn't write the book, he didn't do the documentary, uh, there there would be no key for the interviews. Him coming out. Do you think about it? Yeah, I do. it's weird. It's how these things these ironies, like if we didn't, if I hadn't have retired and written the book, right. then Keefe D would have stayed silent. But once the story was out there, he felt that it was then his his story to tell. So it opened the door for him to go out and then begin, um, you know, talking about what he had said in his in his police in, um, interview, and that led to everything. You know, it just continued to evolve and create havoc for him anyways right what What do you think about this whole like the media is taking advantage of it like it's, it's creating a whole circus this this, this person supposedly coming out and what, what are your thoughts on everything that's just like as far as the media what's well, the media is doing what it's going to do you know of course their whole motive is to get viewership and sensationalize things and exploit things and bring attention to it and, and in this case that's good i mean Everybody should be excited about this this news, um, but again, it just also generates all the nonsense with it. You know, all the hysteria creates a bunch of nonsense. You see Suge saying stupid shit. Um, you see, you know, just this whole new or whole you know new gamut of just nonsense that's going to always be attached to these cases. Yeah, let's address that. Um, well, recently, a few hours ago, now that Suge supposed it, it, the Sun posted that Suge is going to be testifying, and then Teamsy did an interview with Suge and him saying that he he's not going to testify, and the shooter wasn't Orlando. He wasn't. He didn't confirm that it was Dre, but it wasn't mm -hmm. Orlando. So it's a. What are your thoughts, first of all? <laughs> that whole thing? Well, my thoughts are this, and this I, I've I've always said this, and it hasn't changed. If Suge's if Suge Knight's lips are moving, you can bet your life that he's lying. It's just <laughs> the way that it is. If Suge Knight is talking, he's lying. It's mm -hmm. all he does. You know, he said Tupac's alive. He's alluded to Diddy's involvement. He's just you know, always stirring the pot. You know, it's it's just the nature of Suge Knight. But uh, you can't take anything he says um, as truth without a whole bunch of corroborating evidence. Otherwise, it's just him running at the mouth like he always has. Can we speak a hypothetical? Let's say he, he can he, is there some sort of deal for him if he was to testify against Keefe? I don't see that. I don't see that the district attorneys in Los Angeles or the sheriff's department that has his current case, I don't see them making any kind of deal whatsoever um, for in exchange for um, testimony in in KVD's case. Now, you think, there's some things to keep in mind here, and this is how it would play out. Of course, we know that Suge was behind Biggie's murder, so now your your witness is going to be also a murderer who is trying to exonerate another murderer <laughs> for the similar type of murder. <laughs> and then, of course, it's going to get introduced because the, the big question is, and this is the question the media is asking, why is it taking so long for mm -hmm. Las Vegas PD to solve this case? And I can tell you, if there is one reason, if there's one person responsible for this taking 27 years to solve, it's Suge Knight. Mm. Suge Knight could have had this thing solved in 24 hours. All he had to do when Las Vegas police summoned him for an interview, which he tried to avoid on multiple occasions, and then when he did go in, he said he didn't know anything. He refused to talk to him. 
All he had to do was say, listen, I pulled up, saw the white Cadillac. I looked right across. I saw Keefe D dead in the eye. It was Keefe D and his crew. And Tupac's case would have been solved in 24 hours. So for those of those, for people who are upset about how long it took, but also want to give Suge any props or come to his aid, you can't do both. You know, <laughs> right? You, you know, you can't do both. You can't be a Suge fan and a Pac fan. Right. Uh, the grand jury supposedly has a. Uh, this came out today. I'm not sure. It, I'm not sure if they meant Suge or if they meant someone else. That there's a witness ready to testify. I'm not sure what you mean. There were several witnesses testified in the grand jury. That was the whole purpose. Is to. Oh, I'm sorry. That, that could testify that it wasn't Orlando. Oh yeah, I know that. Yeah, so that individual, I've known that guy forever. We've, you know, we were interviewing him as early as two thousand six or seven. Um, he was instrumental in helping us move forward with the case. I know him well, and it, it's his opinion. He, you know, he wasn't in Las Vegas. He didn't witness anything. He just was going off of rumors that he heard on the streets. He did know all of these guys, um, so it's his opinion. But you've got to understand what the purpose of a grand jury is. This particular grand jury, the purpose was to indict Keefe D. Mm -hmm. Who the gunman was is irrelevant. That's not the point. The point is, were was Keefe D directly involved in the murder of Tupac Shakur? That was it. All of the ancillary stuff, well, who else was involved? That's for a different day. Now, if this witness were put on the stand during trial, and they said, well, you said in the grand jury that it was Dre. How do you know that? That's what I heard. Well, what do you mean? Well, you know, I know these guys. I heard them talking about it. Is this. I thought it was Dre. That's who I believe it was. So in a grand jury, you don't get to cross-examine any of these witnesses to determine the validity of their statements. And much like this, it's, this is just an opinion. You know, people thought that Terrence Brown. People have opinions that KVD did it. So everyone has opinions. But until you can, you know, corroborate those opinions with other factual evidence, that's the only value of them. They're just an opinion. Wait, wait, wait. Did I just hear you right? You said that people have an opinion. People think that Keefe took care of Terrence Brown? No, no. People think that Keefe D was a trigger man. People oh. have thought that Terrence Brown was a trigger man. Okay. They're all boasting about it when they get back to Compton after leaving Vegas. Everybody's running around that was in the car saying, except for Keefe D, who's trying to tell everyone to shut the fuck up. Right. Um, you know, but it, it was it was well known that, you know, other informants and stuff were coming forward going, hey, I heard Dre bragging about it. I had Terrence was bragging about it. Hey, Orlando's bragging about it. So, you know, everybody is trying to take credit for this. But mm -hmm. listen, this is the most important thing that people have to understand. And it's difficult when you don't fully understand the nuances of gang culture. Right. It's Orlando Anderson's job to shoot Tupac. Nobody else gets to do that. Nobody else gets to punk Orlando Anderson by doing it themselves. It's his job because he's the one that they're retaliating for. He was the assault victim. He's the one that needs to take care of the business because he was the whole reason they're out there on the street looking for Tupac anyways. Right. So people don't understand that. You know, he, it's, it's his job within the understanding of gang activity, gang culture, and gang expectations to do the job. Right. Um, people think it's I believe people think it's Big Dre because somewhere I don't know how this rumor started, but people keep saying big or fat arms they saw it come out the window or or Dre was bi so big that, <laughs> that Orlando couldn't shoot over him. Now I've read all the witnesses from the outlaw from I mean from the outlaws that was behind the car, the witness statements. I mean, can you correct me? I, I don't believe none of them say they say a, they saw a big black arm. This is all new information. None of this stuff, even in even this witness that uh, testified in the grand jury, this is all stuff that comes many, many years later, 20-something, 20 27 years later. These are little elements that have worked themselves into the story. None of this was um, – these characteristics, these features were never, I, were never brought up back when it mattered, back when the original statements were made. And so, um, you know, a big arm or, you know, a darker arm, whatever it was, right. um, 
it's it's important to go back and look at what was said originally when it was still fresh in their minds when other things haven't influenced their memory what did they say back then because that's the best information not 27 years later when uh, you've you've been talking about this amongst friends for two decades two and a half decades um so it's important to kind of keep those things in mind but how credible is the the notion of um of this big black arm or should we just forget about it is it off the table listen you ever been in the back of a cadillac they're pretty damn roomy you know, the guy's <laughs> sitting there and you need to lean over him it's no problem I hang out with a lot of fat dudes, and if I needed to get my arm out of a window, I can get over the top of them to do it. Right. So it's it's you know this whole idea that well it's just too damn big. There's no way that you can... yeah bullshit. And if you want to do a demonstration, I'll get a 300 pound guy and we'll sit in the back of a Cadillac, and uh, I'm not as skinny as Orlando, and I'll still get my arm out that window. Right. Oh man, it's hilarious. I see. I see. But let me ask you this. James wanted me to ask you, ask him about this. Oh, yeah, the supposed witness. I'm curious. Who's, can, I guess you can't say who the supposed witness is, right? No, I can't. He's he was in a, he was a, a protected informant. He will be until if they call him for trial, then they'll have to figure out how to introduce his testimony without exposing his identity. But uh, for him, he was helpful in the case um, and I wouldn't want to see any harm come to him. So. Uh, right. But I understand he's expressing his opinion. Okay. And we talked, you know, I'd interviewed that guy at least a dozen times. Is it someone that you've talked to me off camera? I mean, off record about it? Mm -mm. Is it somebody in your book? Is he named in your book? <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> I just got done saying I'm trying not okay, to okay. do anything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm mad, sorry about mm. uh, James asked, ask him if they can use Keefe's proffer they did with him as evidence since Keefe is now arrested and being charged with murder since he broke. Great him. question. That's a really great question. So that's going to be a legal issue that needs to be argued. And so it's going to have to go before a judge at some point and make a determination whether or not Keefe has violated the terms and conditions of his proffer. Not necessarily by going out and bragging independently of his interviews um, with us, but if he now goes and says that I'm not guilty, I didn't do any of this, that infers that he lied to us. He tells us he's guilty and that he did all these things. If he's now saying, I'm not guilty, I didn't do any of these things. Well, does that mean he's now violated the conditions of the proffer? And if so, is there any protection anymore? So it's going to be an issue. It'll, it'll be a really interesting thing for the courts to work out. Wow. Another question from him says, ask him if he thinks Keefe will likely try to cut a deal to avoid a trial. I mean, I doubt it will go to trial. He's likely mm -hmm. not going to take the stand and then get buried with all the evidence of him talking on the platforms and his book he wrote. Yeah. So I think that he'll plead not guilty this week at the arraignment. He's likely to go and uh, meet with a, you know, a defense attorney, an appointed defense attorney. And they'll discuss his options. And I think that there probably is going to be a motion. His attorney, if he's any good, will put a motion to suppress his public statements from court. A judge will have to rule whether or not Keefe's public statements, his book, his podcast, all the stuff that he said is admissible. I can't imagine the judge not allowing it in court. So once they lose that battle, once the judge rules that it's all admissible, then Keefe D has to reevaluate his situation. And if it looks like there's a strong likelihood of getting convicted with special circumstances, with because of the gun enhancement, the gang enhancement, and all of those things, and Keefe D is looking like life without, he may want to reapproach the idea of pleading out to a lesser charge for, for a sentence that will let him see the, let him potentially see the light of day again. Okay, this is, let's say he does cu cu cut a deal. What mm. what what kind of sentence is he looking at? If he cut a deal, yeah, it's hard to say. Uh, second, I don't know. You could probably go and do some research on average second degree sentences in in uh, in the state of Nevada. I don't know. But he's not going to go home, right? Like, oh no, 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 no. No probation or something. No, like that. no, 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 
no, okay. Keefe. If he's as sick as they say, or if he's got <laughs> cancer, then even a 15 year sentence is essentially, you know, it's equivalent. It's it's like a life sentence. It's much like Suge, you know. Suge will never see, likely never see the light of day. Yeah, sadly. Sadly. Um, <laughs> well, you know. Sadly. I mean. Yeah. Um. <laughs> let me ask you. This. You can't love Tupac and Biggie and at the same time have empathy for their killers. Well, that's, well yeah, I'm, I'm just saying. Just, I know people that know them. I'm not trying to get on get it on their bad side. That's all. That's all right. <laughs> no, no, yeah. But let me ask you this. Um. Where does this leave Puff with all this? Like, do do you think is it's is there any any blow any real blowback as far as legally? Uh, Towards Puff, or is he in the clear? You know how I feel about that. I've always thought that I've always thought that Puff was just talking, you know, out of fear and desperation. He's exaggerated in the things that he's saying. I this is my own personal opinion, and unless they introduce corroborating witnesses to corroborate Keefe D, um, I don't see anything going down with Puff. I I just don't feel that. He truly intentioned any of this to happen. That's my opinion, based on um, all the different circumstances. Right. You know, so I don't see it going that far. And again, you've got to keep in mind, even if the DA tried to take it that far, Puffy's going to bring a dream team. Oh, He's yeah. going to bring the best lawyers that anybody could buy, and the witnesses that are likely to be involved in prosecuting him are going to have are, are are going to have their own baggage so to speak right their own cred a credible cre credibility issue yeah you mean in the car yeah wow well what, what do you think of the uh there's an interview where they ask him hey there's this documentary and <laughs> and he's like he ba basically avoids the answering the question in a way well yeah i mean what's he gonna do he's got to is he to deflect it or ignore it or confront it, which is always I thought the best thing to do is confront this. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, sit down and go, man, let's go back in time. Let's talk about what was actually going on. Let's talk about how afraid I was for myself and for my family. Let's talk about what was actually going down. Should thought I was responsible for the murder of his own bodyguard. You mm -hmm. know, he held me accountable for that. You know, and then all this other stuff. He's kidnapping guys at Christmas parties. You know, beating the hell out of him, trying to get my home address. I'm pissing on them. I'm in fear for my life. Mm -hmm. I got, uh, it got ahead of me. It got outside of my control. This is what I, I think that this is actually what happened. And so because I think that's what happened, I think the best thing to do is just talk about it. Let people, be transparent. People will understand, you know. Somebody comes after me or my family. I'm not sure I'm not doing the exact same thing. You're not putting million dollar hits on them? Well, I handle that shit myself. <laughs> I'm just saying Puffy's not built like that. Right, right, right. So, you know, Puffy's not should. Right, exactly. That's my opinion. A lot of people are going to disagree with me. People are going to be like, nah, man, he needs to go down. Well, right. you better bring a hell of a lot of very, very strong evidence. You got to have something a lot stronger than Keefe D's, um, you know, statements about their meetings. Right. Um, if you were Puff, do you think he's he's a little bit nervous since this news uh, has came out about Keefe's arrest? I doubt it. Mm. I doubt it. Yeah, probably too rich for to be worried. He probably knows everything I just said. You know, he probably, you know, is, again, if he's consulting attorneys like, hey, do I have any exposure here? You know, this is what happened. And they're probably like, what, based on that guy? On Keefe D? You're worried about him? Hmm. That dude just needs to worry about himself before he starts pointing fingers elsewhere at this point. Right. Yeah. So, 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 for, so for example, let's say Keefe just starts squealing, hey, it was puffy. I mean, I did it under because uh, I was gonna, gonna get supposedly paid a million dollars. That's not even gonna help Keefe's situation, no, or help. No, no, not at all. That is, no, that won't help Keefe at all. 
It doesn't matter if the motive was a contract or if it was retaliation for Orlando's beatdown. It doesn't matter. It was premeditated. Is that's what matters? Um, but you know, for what reason? Um, that's not ultimately going to matter very much. And uh, I don't think anybody who understands all the ins and outs of this thing, if that fight with Orlando didn't happen, Tupac doesn't get shot. Period. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you, well, what would happen if you and Keefe in a room, <laughs> do you, do you guys like, would you catch up or what, what, would, what, would, what would that be like? I'd just ask him how he got so stupid. <laughs> you know, I would honestly like, what the fuck were you thinking? You know, you couldn't just quietly fade off. You know, I, I'm glad he's being held accountable. Like right. I've always, since the day I left the job, I always thought he still, he should have been prosecuted for the narcotics. You know, we had a life case on him and I argued that they should still, you know, there was never an agreement that we wouldn't charge him for all the dope that uh, he was dealing. The only agreement was we'd hit, give him consideration on potential sentencing for those drugs and we wouldn't use his own statements against him. He never got immunity. He never had any assurances that he wouldn't be prosecuted for Pox murder. He, none of that. Mm. And I argued, I was like, hey, don't let this dude off the hook. He's a murderer. And, uh, you know, if he were still doing drugs today, he'd probably be dealing fentanyl. Right. So, you know, it's, I don't think, I have no empathy for Keefe D. And if we were in a room together, and I went and met with him after I retired and I was publishing my book, I went to his house and I said, here, I'm putting a book out there, just so you know. I don't want to see you get killed over this, but it's going to go public. I'm letting people know what happened. And, uh, you know, you walked on a dope case, you walked on a murder case. And so the consequences are now you're going to be judged in the court of public opinion. Right. And, uh, and he just, he wanted to be the one that told the story. So that's when he went out and began to do his own thing. Like, what was re his reaction when you told him, Hey, I'm going public. He said, that's fucked up. And I said, yeah, it is. I'm, I can see how you would think it's fucked up, but I'm still doing it. Hmm. Like I said, I don't have empathy right. for guilty people who aren't held accountable for the things that they do. I could Stand that. up, take responsibility, and plead for mercy. Right, I could see that. Um, now, <laughs> I heard Reggie uh, on his platform say that it's possible to get, because supposedly, let's say, you know, I don't know, Puffy wrote a check to Zip, whether it be a million dollars or 500000 you know, all you had to do is like maybe go into Zip's rec financial records and find that. And, you know, you're able to maybe, you know, uh, get Puffy caught up in this case. Is that any, is, is that possible or no? no? Not at this point. I mean, that would have been possible if we had the information about Puffy and Zip, if we had that information back in the, you know, late 1990s, then yeah, then maybe there's a possibility of some kind of paper trail. But by the time we find out in 2009, no, we're not going to find anything. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well, um, and if they're smart, there's no paper trail anyways. Exactly. Yeah, there was no paper trail and Suge's payment to Poochie. We did have those records because those records were already being they were long before there was ever a, you know, information about Pucci and before we had anybody confess to Biggie's murder, the, uh, the whole death row thing was already under scrutiny and investigation anyways, because of a racketeering investigation. So they were already getting the records there. They had already seized all the computers and looked at all the files. And so if there was anything in there that looked, you know, cause we went back and looked at all, they preserved all of those documents. So we went back there and reviewed it all. Does anything go to Wardell Faust? Is anything going to Wardell Faust? Is anything going to the female that's that's un you know right, right. Un, unusual or suspicious? So we were able to go back. We didn't find anything, and uh, so that is what it is. So wait, wait, so since you didn't find anything, does it mean he, he probably paid him cash? No. Yeah, or figured out a way. You know, Shug used to buy guys cars, and and uh, he he'd take care of them in other ways. Um, but she says there was cash transfers. We don't know how those cash transfers transfers went down. Um, 
So we weren't able to prove any direct financial connection to proof to, to Pucci, but we believe there was because the girl has credibility. Right. Let me ask you this. Um, what is the total that, that, can I say her name? Teresa, her name Teresa Swan, right? Yeah, that's her alias. It's fine. Um, how much was was he paid? Pucci was paid for um, for taking out Biggie because it was a, it was first it, 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 another one one whole cash uh, payment, and then it was like more so to like get out of town or something. Yeah, I think there was two. Um, there was two. Contra- um, transactions. transactions. Yeah, there was two transactions. I don't remember the amounts at this. I just don't recall. It was like thirteen grand or four grand or wasn't very much oh, wow. but man. these are hood dudes man they uh they would 10 grand was a lot to a guy back then right i see now yeah. I, I read something <laughs> I, I read something crazy i'm not sure if this is something that's true um the grand jury saw unseen photos of tupac's dead body i'm not is that something that that's possible or no um, there was probably photographs. I mean, maybe the art, maybe the, the prosecutor was showing, you know, the the wounds where they came from to show to establish that they came from the direction of a uh, um, from the direction of a passing vehicle. So maybe as they're set because they want the grand jury is probably a bunch of people who don't have a clue about the case, right. and they're trying to explain to them how this all went down. So maybe they're showing photographs of Tupac's body to sh- you know, show how he was killed and and why they believe the gunshots came from the right and from a passing vehicle. So yeah, I don't know. I don't um, know what's in those. I don't know when, what's in the entirety of those documents. Right. Have you, I mean, when you were on the case where you see, um, other than the autopsy photo that's been out there in the public for years and years, were you previewed to any other autopsy photos of Tupac or no? I mean, in our case file, because back when this was all going down in 96 and 97, there was a lot of communication going back and forth between Las Vegas and, and with LAPD because everybody surmised that the two murders were somehow connected. So some of their case files got in ours and some of our case files ended up in theirs. Right. And so I, you know, I saw what we had. Obviously it's not the entire case file that, that Vegas had, but it was enough to have a very clear understanding of what people said and what people saw. Right. Um, okay. Well, I heard there's a rumor that I, I'm not sure if it's true. I, I hope you, you know, um, address it keefe was supposedly uh um trying to sell the the murder weapon and of two uh, or made people think that he was selling the murder weapon to, that killed tupac so that why that, that's how he got caught up and arrested I don't know. yeah i don't know anything about that okay well I didn't, that. That's, that's cool um well there it is any last words uh, um for the people for the fans um, no, other than uh, I think we can all celebrate, you know, that this whole thing is finally, you know, have some closure. So I think that that's good. I think everybody should be thankful that we got here. Right. It's a, you know, a little overdue, long overdue. Um, but at least, at least it's not hopeless anymore. And, um, I was, I'm happy. Did you, uh, last thing, did you ever think that this would happen? You would, you would be, you would see it like actually happen? I don't know, man. I'll be honest. I was getting really skeptical. Yeah, I, I, I think I've said on a few times that uh, nothing's going to happen or no one will ever get arrested. So I'm glad I'm wrong about that. All right. Well, there it is, Greg. I appreciate your time. Yep. My Enjoy pleasure. All right, buddy.